If it swims, he seeks it. If it exists, he will find it. And if it's possible, he'll catch it. Simply Fishing and host Bob Masacomer are on a quest to expand your fishing horizons on every episode. Brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Beckman, North America's trusted name in nets. Klein Nissan, your Nissan dealer with a global perspective. M&G by Lindy, now with the Buckaboo. Pose, makers of the original giant jackpot and a waker. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Angler's Edge Plus, fishing on the edge of technology. And by Western Filaments Tough Lines, when only the toughest will do. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here. You know, every week we find ourselves on some remote Canadian location in search of Trophy Muskie. This week we'll change that tune as we, Nate Bard and myself, challenge the Big V. For those unaware, that's Lake Vermilion located in northern Minnesota. Nate and I will share the boat for only two days as guests of Pearson's Lodge Resort located on the extreme west end of the system. Can Nate put his first muskie in the boat while here at Pearson's? Oh, there we go. Can we succeed in only two days? Or has Nate not paid enough dues to impress the monsters of the Big V? <laughs> Stay tuned, you're about to find out. Lake Vermilion, or the Big V as we musky anglers have come to know it, is in fact a reservoir spanning some 25 miles in length and fishes just as if it were a smaller version of the famous Lake of the Woods. Countless islands, reefs, weed beds and other structures can be found within the containing shorelines of this magnificent resource. In years past, we musky fishermen have seen this resource go from being a walleye smallmouth fishery to one of, if not the best musky fishery in the state. <laughs> Some feel, and you can count me in on this, that Lake Vermilion is actually one of the best musky fisheries in the world today. Anglers from all parts of the U.S. and Canada now make an annual pilgrimage to this lake in search of these incredible monsters. Many of them choose the same location as we have this week to anchor their pursuit. Pearson's Lodge and Resort is located on the westernmost extreme of Lake Vermilion and delivers some of the finest accommodations the area has to offer. Pearson's Lodge and Resort is easily reached while staying on hard blacktop pavement the entire way, which means a lot to those of you driving your 30, 40, 50, and sometimes $60,000 rigs. Pearson's operates for the most part as a housekeeping facility, allowing for anglers to structure their meals around the fish schedule. <laughs> and we all know what that means to a musky angler. Better water time and better prices. For your next trip to Lake Vermilion, I would highly recommend contacting Pearson's Lodge and Resort. Many of my musky friends already do. <laughs> and who knows, maybe you'll see us there. Really good fish. All right, I'm gonna, I'm almost where I need to be. A couple more feet and I'll turn us. There's some hidden cabbage out here that is further out than most people fish, but I know it's here. I'll just turn us ready to drift down. Let her rip. We'll just work our way down. We're just going to kind of follow the cabbage the whole way? Yeah, I'm going to just set us up so we can drift the outside line. We'll just, we're pretty much in line with it right now. Too bad you can only throw that about six miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, definitely go through a little bit of spool. <laughs> Well, just remember, if you get hooked up out there, you're going to have to wind a little, little quicker than you think to stay with them. Oh, because of the wind drifting it towards the fish. Yeah, we'll be drifting right on top of it. And then she might come running at us too, so I'll really have to be on top of it. Yeah, the whole process will be accelerated. But you can see the cabbage here. I'll show you what we're dealing with. See the cabbage? Ah. I mean, some of it's old and some of it's still good. So there's plenty of vegetation. I mean, oxygen coming off this vegetation. It's not, it's not totally dead to the issue, but that's what we're fishing, right alongside the edge of that. Yeah, 
and you've got to, you know, basically suck those fish up out from underneath that canopy. Midsummer, that stuff is just green, crispy green and vibrant. Probably better than it is now, too, as far as fish holding is concerned. But down below, that stuff is still pretty green, down by the roots. And that's where they are. You can throw about 250 miles per cast. <laughs> Can you imagine how rough it is out on the big lake? Oh, I bet it's four or five foot rollers. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Stay with her, big guy. The musky king, man. Okay, and we're gonna be drifting toward it now, so just hold on. She's coming right towards the boat. Yep, yep, I know. We're going to be drifting toward it, so it's going to be fast. You can bring her around the other side if you want. Go uh -oh. around the motor. She's already around the motor, I nope, think. I got her out of it. Okay. Keep her head down. Okay. Keep her coming. What? You're okay, you're okay. Take your time. Beautiful. <laughs> Woo! That was out there too. Yeah, it was. Okay. She's that an ordinary one. Out there. Okay. Oh. <sighs> ordinary one. I'm gonna give you the net now. I have to unroll her. She's wrapped up, so let me get these tips out of the way. We're in good shape. Okay. How are we doing here, guy? Okay. Tool time. Okay, how are we doing here? I'm just going to take her and sit her back in, okay? Okay. Can I see her? Beautiful fish. She loaded too. See how pretty she is? See, the little one's got more prominent spots, plus this fish is in the vegetation. So she's mimicking that environment that's down there. A lot of green. See, see I get her back, huh? Let's get it back. Live for another day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she'll live another day. There she goes. Beautiful. Right back down in her habitat. Boy, I tell you, somebody's gonna get into this musky fishing stuff. <laughs> I'll work on this. <laughs> that awaker's working really good in this wind, isn't it? It is. Bringing it back over the waves. Yep, over the top of them. I have thrown bucktails and spinner baits, and they're not looking at them, but they are taking a chance at that uh, at that awaker. Well, we got two very vocal baits in the water right now. I'm pulling this m g You're pulling a waker. That thing's really loud on top. This is going to be making more noise under the water. When we get up here though, we want to flirt with the dark spots. You'll see, you'll see where the, the coontail and the cabbage, like right there. You want to draw your baits as close to those as you can, because that's where the fish are. The fish are going to be laying right up to that balled up stuff. They're not going to be out in the open. So drag, drag this over it. Yeah, over it or around the edges. Even though we have a little wind out here right now, we don't have any overcast to go along with that. So these fish are still gonna, they're gonna hang pretty tight to stuff. 64 degree water, either one of these baits, M and G or that awaker could do the job. That awaker is kind of nice because you can flow over the top of this and never even get caught up on it. I have to sort of manage what I'm doing. Watch my lure all the time, make sure I don't get into one of the balls of coontail. These walleye are cuddled up to the outside edge of this weed line. Yeah, we'll comb, we'll comb these lures in and among these dark spots. I'll keep correcting this because 
If I can get the boat corrected out, then we can just kind of drift through here. We both get shots at this newer water. And rest assured, you could get a giant to come out and eat that thing. Yes, hang on to him. Keep your head, rod down, rod down, rod down, rod down. Yeah. I don't think I got a book very well. Beckman's in the water, so when you come to me, you will get her. Bring her this way. Both drifting, so. There you go. I'm gonna hand you the net handle. We're drifting pretty fast here, so we're in good shape. But keep her up this way. I'm gonna have to pop the hooks out of her. She don't like you. Fin clip fish. Oh, pardon? It's a fin clip fish. That's how they. Uh, that's how they gauge the growth rates of them. They know what the fin clipping is. Just came up right after that awaker. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Tell you what I'm gonna do now. Pull the net. Grab the glove. Yeah. How big do you think she is? 45. Right in there. This one's a little ambunctious. Yes, it is. Here, <laughs> fella. You can tighten up the bag by, by just taking up some slack there. I think I got it. You got her? So. Okay, hang on. Let me get the. Let me get the. Make sure you got a good hold of her there. That's a beautiful fish. Yeah, hang on. Let me get your camera. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Oops, little guy. Still pretty nice. Not well lit, but we got a good picture. Awesome. Set her back in there. Let her go. Grab the tail. There you go. Boat's going to be kind of drifting, so if you lay right flat of your belly and kind of push her head away from the boat. There you go. There, she wants to go. Just let her go. She'll be fine. She'll get her nose into that wind. She'll find her way back down again, no problem. There's history, out of here. One thing you're gonna wanna do, Nate, is fish tight to shore, staying off the rocks, of course. Right, And one of those today. See the shadows and stuff? The reason we're in here is we wanna hit these shadows. See if we can pull fish out of the shadows. We're gonna fish up past that boathouse, see that pontoon right there? Yeah. Gonna fish around that where those shadows are real extreme in that inside corner. And then we're out to the point, and we'll go around the point. It gets really bright and sunny. I don't suspect it'll be as good as the shaded side, which is the reason we shut the boat down where we did to work through here. And then we'll jump across, and if we don't do any good, then we'll look for more. And if we do well, well, we'll celebrate. So, but we're running about seven, eight, nine foot of water in here. And this is a highly traveled area. This dock right here. There's a construction company up on that dock. You can hear the noise back there. We want to be through the dock and done with it before they get down there. But you can see those shaded areas? Yeah. Very key. And although that muskie's looking for warmer water right now with 64 degree water, they still like to cover their eyes. They like to have shade. The problem we've had is that barometer's been at basically the top of the game, 30.2, 30.24. Got up this morning and saw that 29.95, and 
which is relatively high still, but better than what it was. But you can see now as we come around the dock right here, the shaded areas right in this pocket. It's a safety zone. Anywhere from here on is, should be dangerous, uh, particularly right in this shaded area here. So we'll work our way through. We'll refrain from hitting the dock, the pontoon, or the boat. Bingo. Cover that. See the shade in the corner right there? Yep. Cover that well. You got her. Nailed it. Oh, there we go. Yep, he's into him. Stay with her, big guy. Stay with her. You got her. Ready for you. Good fish. Ooh, nice fish. Ah, yeah, nice fish. Oh, yes. 50 inches. Okay, here's what we got to do. Uh, let's get your, um, I'm going to put you down. I'm going to put you back here. No, I'm going to put you down in the seat right here. Okay. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to swing the net around to you because I got to move rods and stuff, okay? All right, let me just hold on to it. Yeah. Okay, keep her up, keep the bag up. In the water, but the hoop up. There you go. That's a 50 inch fish, guy. Oh, <laughs> I saw those guys walking down on the dock and I go, we got to fish this pocket before they get in there. Just hit it and I saw him turn. I'm like, oh, game on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a 5 0 fish. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Nate, you did good. Set them all? Uh, let's see what we got here. Look at her tail. Looks like oh, yeah, that happens a lot. Not We didn't do that. No, it looked like it would be bleeding. Yep, no, we had to do that. Okay, let me get the bucktail out of there. Okay. Okay, she's going to swim around the net. She's fine. Just leave her down in the net. I want to cut the line. Okay, Nate, that's going to be a handful. Now hand me the handle. Once you have control of the fish, it's going to be a lot bigger. You're going to have, let me, if, let me go back. There you go. Let me go backwards with the net. You can get down in the seat there. All the way up. Now you're gonna want a real good hold on her. Now don't lift her until I tell you to, because I gotta turn cameras on, okay? <laughs> Handful? Yep. Okay. All right, your camera stays on. Should be. You're not just that power button right next to the shot button. Okay, we're off on both of them, so. All right, when you're ready. You're going to go to the back deck. Got a hold of her? Yep. Okay, you're going to want, once you get her up there, you'll find your thumb will be just comfortable there. Okay. So go ahead and lift her. And you want to support the back. <sighs> hold her up. Oh, come on, smile. Oh, this is incredible. Okay, sit her down in the water. Now, this time, hold on a minute. Sit her down in the water, hang on to the jaw. Okay. Okay, she's in good shape, okay? What I want you to do, if you can, is hang on to her head. Got it. If she blows up and goes away, not a problem. She's a 5-0 fish, we know that. 
Let's just see if we can get a measurement for you. Okay, you want to take your other hand, take that to the jaw. All the way to the end of their nose. Yeah. Okay. 50 and a half. Cool. 50 and a half. I like that. <laughs> okay, now put her head down. What I want you to do is support the back of her body. You're going to grab. You're actually going to. Okay. Grab her. Grab her. There you go. There you go. 50 and a half, guy. I like it. Good job. The whole time we worked the fish, we worked the fish in the Beckman in the water and along the boat in the water. Never in the boat except for the two pictures we took. Two quick pictures. Yep. So the boat, the fish has not been out of its element for more than a couple of seconds. She's perfectly healthy and a 50 and a half. That's incredible. <laughs> so what do you think about coming up to Pearson's on uh, Vermilion? Highly recommended, that's for sure. <laughs> Even on a sunny day. Even on a sunny day. Anything's possible. Well, the barometer fell for us last night from 30.27 to 29.95 this morning. And a barometer shift like that is not is, is an indicator of potential fish, even in bright sunny conditions, although they're not the best. As you can see, you got her. Good job. Thank you very much. She's going to go away from me. She'll just start swimming away. Here she goes. Perfectly healthy. Perfectly healthy. 50 and a half inch musky, folks. <gasps> <laughs> oh. Hey, folks, thanks for watching this week. Remember, practice CPR, catch, form, and release. The future fishing is in your hands. This was this man's very first fish, Nathan Bard. He's our Nissan rep down at Klein. He's actually sales manager, Nathan. Yeah. The sales manager at, at Klein Nissan. He's the people that put that beautiful Armada you see every week on our show underneath our butts. We're proud to be with Nissan. We're proud to be with Klein Nissan. And I'm proud to have Nate as a friend. Oh, you got a little beauty blood there? Absolutely. Keep fishing. Got a little. <laughs> we'll see you folks next week for more Simply Fishing. If you want Nate back, just write me and we'll maybe invite him back again. <laughs> Good job. <laughs>